welcome to another video tutorial with me Jessica from Starbase 118. Today we are going through a request from one of our players, I do on the Nara. I'm sorry if I totally butchered that. Um, she asked for changing hair and skin colors. Um, there are several techniques to do that and today I'm going to show you one that lets um, us go from this nice slightly reddish hair to the blonde hair to black hair to brown hair and to white hair which I use for Andorians for example um, for before I start with those techniques I'm going to show you some that work too it depends on your preferences so first is the color blend layer so that means we make a new layer here let me make it a clipping mask so it only applies to the hair here because I also made this a transparent background then we go to color and choose the color that you want to give that hair let's go with a punky green you never know when we need that and then we just draw over that this is quite easy you will have of course to fix up the edges here everything and around the skin so the skin is not green as well you can play with the opacity to intensify or to lower the color intensity here you can do that with lots of colors this works best with the funky colors let me go to the adjustment the saturation then you can see several colors with hot pink and purple and sea blue and sea green those colors work best with that it is hard to make a natural looking redhead or blonde with this kind of technique lower the opacity um, saturation a bit playing around with that now this would be a nice looking redhead but she was a redhead before so that doesn't really count <laughs> um, this is one of the techniques it says you make a new layer and then change the blending mode to color you could also try to go to other blending modes see how that works out sometimes you get very fascinating effects but like this is a really dark greenish brown or this is an interesting blonde with dark roots so if she's a dyed blonde you can totally do that so this is the one technique the next is you go with hue saturation I do that with the non-destructive way and use adjustment layers down here hue saturation and then play around with the hue here take the saturation out and there you have a brown that looks not too bad actually um, you can also go to color, uh, colorize here to make sure that you grab all the colors in the hair for example give it a nice steel grey afterwards you of course have to go here on the mask take a bl black brush and paint over the face because we don't have people that are black and white at least I don't know of any if you know a species that goes black and white feel free to do that we will have to fix a couple of things here of course but that works that was hue saturation then we have color balance color balance is one of the great tools that lets you mix and match lots of colors and we go again with the adjustment layers and here's color balance then you can for example pull out the red and put some magenta into it and make it more blue or more yellowish you can make, give it a nice green 
playing around with these to mix it to the color that you want to have. This is midtones. Then shadows can have a different or orientation direction, like for example this. And you can add some blue here, which makes for a nice natural color as well. You just play with those sliders around here and some highlights which would make for an interesting blondish brown tone. Um, one thing I can show you here is you have been working on the um, mask layer here before. Now if you want to make sure that only the facial region is changed in your next layer without making the clipping mask. I mean you can do the clipping mask here but you can also press Alt your ex ex um, already existing layer mask here pull it onto the next layer mask and press yes for replace and then you have the same layer mask on both which can be rather handy and you will see me using later so I thought I'd explain it now um, so this is color balance. This is something we might use later, but first let me show you now. Um, the blonde and the white are the hardest to do, so we will leave them for later. The easiest of those four is brown. This is one brown, there are so many browns out there, so you can really do a lot of that. That is your own style, but I'll show you how I got this. Um, as you can see here, I have a couple of adjustment layers. Here I used the trick with the copy of the mask and I'm going to show you that. So first I'm going to make a new group. <coughs> I put this new layer in here just to make sure that all the adjustment layers I make now will land in this group. And I'm starting with selective color. This is an adjustment layer and you see it down here at the bottom and I'm going to the reds because she has a reddish hair and for the brown I want to take some of that red out of the red hair so magenta is the one that puts your purple and pink colors into here so you can use that and bring it down so you take the red out of it Let's leave it a little bit in and with the black one you take either out the red of the the black out of the red color range or you can add it and taking it out a bit more so let me see if it does anything if I play with yellow yeah taking out a bit of yellow as well you can see if it does anything if you go through all the other ranges here, for example, yellows are in it as well, so you can play with that too. Yeah, putting in a bit more black in here. Let me check the whites. I don't see any changes in the hair, so we don't do anything there. In the blacks, yeah, there are some giving it a bit more dark roots. Don't be surprised when everything else around it changed the background, the clothes, the skin. We will mask that out later. So just look at the hair and see what you want to do with it. Okay, so we have this. Now before we start doing the rest, we will mask out the parts that should not be changed. We just take a black brush and paint on the mask layer here. This is rather quick. You will do it of course with greater care. I just don't want to have you sit here for hours and see me correct all the little mistakes here. But I want to have it a bit nicer. Showing you something here to fix this hairline later, especially with the black we will need that. 
um, also go back to white because the brows here will have to fit the hair. Go to the flow, bring it down, make the brush smaller for the brows and then go over them that with the white. It is not fully white. That means that part of the skin shows through and part of the color goes with it. That makes it look nice and natural. Now let me see what I did in my brown fur before. Yeah, exactly. Now we go to heat saturation. We can add a bit of hue here to give it a bit of more color or we can pull it down to make it more desaturated brown. It depends on what kind of brown you want to have. I really like to have a little bit of more saturation in it. You can play around with your color here, depending on what kind of brown you want again. I only changed a little bit as you see. Then Alt, click on the mask, pull it up, replace. That way only the hair changes. And the next is brightness and contrast. I'm bringing this down a bit because I really like a darker brown. A bit of contrast into it for the roots and shadows. Again hold down Alt and pull the layer mask here. There we go. This is actually a really nice brown. Now you can see here that there are some skin patches inside that are not really the same as the skin because we changed the hair around it. What I do is I take a soft brush, keep the flow really low, like 15, 10-2%. Then I am using the color picker by holding Alt, ch um, choose a bit of skin here, and then I am painting over this. And I'm showing you in a moment. That's idea. Go with this and here between all the fine hair and go to color mode. And there we go. This is really nice blended now. Now the color of the face works together with the color of the scarf here. And that is how we get our brown hair see from red to brown this is the easiest color the next color will be black and we are going to start uh, wait a second brown one let me turn it back to red we're starting a new group with a new layer and then let me show you how we go to black Okay, now first we have to take out all the color of the hair, which means that we use the adjustment layer, use saturation, and pull the saturation way down here. Before we do anything else, again, we will free the face. Oh, I have to put up the flow, of course. We will give the face color back. We will take care of the skin here later. Again we first take care of the hair and then go in for the fine tuning. Let me quickly do this here. Give her a color here. And again, like before, zoom in, pull down the flow, size down, and go over the brows. And make sure that the brows are covered with the colors we have to go with. It's a bit big here. Okay, this 
a nice blend. It's okay. It's G. We will take care of the rest of the skin later. Now, this is of course no black. That's more grey. So, what we will do is add another adjustment layer. Go to the levels we can use here and make it darker with these or a nice natural black and again pull up the mask here so the rest is free another way we can go let me disable this for a moment is curves and pull down the curves here for a nice black Again, pull the mask. So, okay, this is a really nice black. One thing that makes black really, really nice is the nice shine that it has to it. So, we grab a new layer. Let me see which one I like more this one or this one. Actually, I think I like this one better. So, let me delete the curves one. And we clip a new layer to it, and the layer goes to no, it stays on normal actually. Um, then we take a white brush, make it a bit soft and big, and go where there are already highlights, like this here. Flow up again, like this area, and here. No, I'm clipping masks here. And in here, double click, you have to double click here to option the um, open the layer starts, or you right click blending options. This is the same thing. I don't know why they call it two different things, but okay. And then we go here to the blend if. Keep it at grey and go to underlying layer. Then we hold down Alt or Option if you're on a Mac. Go to the first little arrow here and pull it over there. Um, wait a second. Yep, there we go. And then we pull it over here. Pull this over a bit. And this will highlight the already existing highlights. As you can see, this is like a gelled or wet hair, and you can pull this opacity down a bit. This makes it nice and natural, even though it's really a very subtle and very slight effect. So, if you want to have a little color in your black, like you know, some people have a bluish tint in it, some people have a reddish tint in it, or a purplish tint, this depends on the hair color. You can go and make a new layer, color, change the effect you want to have. I, for example, really like the ravenish blue ram black, and you can just open the over this. which of course is right now a little much but then you just pull it down until you have the effect you like like for example this is a nice bluish tint for your black hair what we do now with the hair here the skin is again the same we go to new layer use color a nice soft brush with low flow, sample some skin around and then go in and paint over that like we did in the other hair color. And this way you can make sure that all your skin fits to the hair that you just made and it blends in really really nicely. So this is our black hair. 
wasn't that bad, was it now? Um, and you can see, because we made sure that the brows are masked nicely too, that the brows are now darker than before. And that makes sure that you have a realistic hair change, because the brows usually are about the same color than what you have in your hair. Unless you dyed, of course. In that way, it might be different. Let me rename this in black one and disable back to our red girl. Now, blonde. As I said, blonde is not easy and is one of the hardest natural colors to give your pictures when you change colors. Um, let me show you the folder here. I did a lot of stuff as you can see and I'm going to show you how to get there. Or at least I'm trying. I'm not sure if I can do it a second time but we will see. Um, first we start like the other time, selective colors and we can wait a second. Blacks don't do anything right now. Go to the yellows. We can bring up the yellows a bit. Magenta's down. Play around with these things here. And bring down the black. And this already is very promising. I don't mind personally if she has darker roots here. She can be a dyed blonde for all I care. Um, you can play around a bit with that. And see if you can find, for example, in the blacks, if you pull down the black, that it is better, more to your liking. It's quite possible. And that's okay, you can do it however you like. Um, now let me see how I did that. Oh yes, of course. Um, after this, I did something with painting over the hair. Um, blonde hair usually ranges from yellow to orange, more into the orange direction. It is never really yellow. So I'm going up here for a nice light color which would work pretty well for yellow. And we are going to full flow here and paint this over. Don't be worried about that. And play around a bit with different modes here. For example, this is a nice, this is a very nice um, blondish. It's hue. What we didn't do right now is we didn't make sure that the face isn't changed with the selective color. So let me go that very quickly here. And I am completely aware that I just say go instead of do. I'm mixing up boards today, so just ignore that. Going into this lightly. And make sure that things are really nice. But don't take too much of your time right now. And remember again, go to white, turn your flow down, make your brush nice and small and go over the brow here. So, yep, that way, as you can see, the brow is changed from this red to this blondish color, which will be very, very nice to make it look as natural as possible. the flow again. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Now we can take the hue layer we did and, and can put it over there to make sure that only the hair is tinted with that. If you are not happy with the hue you use for the hair you can go here to adjustment and use saturation and play around a bit with this one here. 
you can put in less saturation or more saturation you can give it a light you don't want to go too high here because then your blonde hair looks green and you don't really want that so I will keep it down here after that I'm going back to the adjustment layers and take the curves clip this to the hair and pull this up not too much and pull this down a bit this is basically trying, I have no idea what the curves do and I only know that if you go in this direction it gets lighter and in this direction it gets darker so I go up here and here I'm actually not going up here for the roots but a little bit darker and then change the opacity a little bit after that I go back in make a mask here in the color layer that I made earlier and make sure that none of the color is in the face on the skin with a soft brush after that again I make a new layer in the color mode sample the skin color back here and go in here to make the blending a little bit nicer and there we go let me change the name to blonde one and here's the original in red and here's the blonde you can play around it because there are many many different ways to do blonde hair and I'm actually quite happy with that. It's really, really hard, as you've seen, to make a natural blonde that isn't too green, not too yellow, and not too in your face. And next, we are going to show. I am going to show you, not we, I'm not royal, to get white hair like this. So, um, white hair like this, I'm using often for Andorians. There are other species, I'm pretty sure, that have white hair, or people in general that like to have white hair. Like we have a new character in the game that has white hair and is human, so sometimes it's shock, sometimes it's just dyeing the hair, sometimes it's a genetic defect, it's albino, or anything that you can find around. So it's not only limited to Andorians. The way I did that is I started the way I started with the black I think so let me see if I can manage to do that again we go here make a new group new layer again and first I'm going to take away the color because white isn't really full of color it can happen that you want to have a slight blue shimmer for example then you can take away color until here and change your hue a bit here until you have a nice blue and that way you will be able to have a nice hint of blue in your white hair but I'm going all the way down for bright white hair then before we do anything else you know the drill already going in and giving the rest the color back. If you go for Andorian you can turn the skin blue with the same techniques. Right now we keep this a human with white hair. What I also usually do is that I erase this eyebrow and put on a white brush eyebrow myself but for this 
tutorial I'm going to do the same as I did before pull down the flow take a small brush and go over this and because I did it a bit too much there we go that's better <coughs> Okay, again the edges of the hairline come last, so we are just doing this now. Now let me see, I think that I used levels to make this lighter. Yes, and this way. This way, we don't want to lose all the detail here. You can hold this. Alt key, pull it up. There we go. <coughs> this is not fully white yet, as you can see here. I have this a bit brighter, so I'm going here to brightness contrast to pull up the brightness a bit. You can either pull down the contrast so you don't have two harsh shadow parts here, or you pull it up and you have really high contrast here. I prefer it this way because usually for example in Dorian's hair is just white or yellowish white and you really don't need too much contrast in there. I just see that we have a little obo down here. Let me erase that. There. I really don't like background pieces peek out at me. Okay, um, this and this, there we go. This is nice. Now let's go in for some curves. Pull this up a little bit more. There. I like this personally. And again, I'm seeing some background peeking out. Yep. Okay, first, let me pull this to the brightness layer and then to the curves layer. And this is actually a very, very nice white here. And then you can see this here. This actually is a little bit awful. <laughs> and pull this down in size, take the flow down again. Um, this was the wrong layer, because hue saturation is not what we want to bring down here. want to make sure this isn't too easy to distinguish. There we go, this is easier. Then we change back to black, make sure it isn't too harsh. Go in the brightness contrast into the curves a little. far we still see this dark edge over there. So we go on a bit more. Make sure it is not that visible. Then we go in with the black again. And this is why I usually use a brush for that. What we can do now to see if that works is making your layer color mode take a sample of the skin and go over this a little bit this and here what I think we need to do here is actually 
join this hair at the hairline with the rest. Say with this here. And here. And here. To make sure that we don't have any weird brown hair between all the white hair. Unless it's a bad dye job, we don't want that. And when we have one layer mask done with that, we can just press Alt, pull them up on the next layer mask and see if that helps. And it doesn't from what I see. Let me see how it works when I go over this again. This is not too bad, but it will need some fine tuning, obviously. Same here. It's a bit too bright. So let's see what makes it so bright. Um, we go to the curves layer and make it a bit darker. This is better. After we are done with that, let's see if brightness contrast helps a bit and yeah levels is the culprit here go bring the flow down and don't mess too much with these parts then in general as you can see is a really really nice white hair that will work very well for any white haired character um, apart from our white aliens it's quite possible that not everything is that white so you can bring a little bit color into it and then the slight dark patches you won't fall into your eye that much. You can also go in and let me show you. Stem these out. So you make a new layer. Go to your stem tool and say all layers. That means that does not only sample the layer you're on right now, but also all the others below. Then you go to the skin next to it that is color-wise close to what you need here. And then you stamp up here and then the hair is gone. You can do the same here. You can lower the opacity a bit so it doesn't harshly change. And there we go. That's so much easier, right? <laughs> okay. Um, let me take the white that I used before. Show you. This is this was a little bit easier here. It's really difficult to do the same thing twice, exactly the same. And now I'm showing you what I usually do with the brows. I make a new layer and I. Stamp over this, nice and soft, so it isn't too harsh. Make sure that color works. And do this a couple of times until the brow is gone. Then I take a color here, it's a grayish white. If you make it all white, it looks unnatural. And I have a bunch of brushes here.
let me find the right one. My computer might of course lag now because I have too many brushes in here. I just use them all the time for all the kind of things. Let me find it and come right back to you. Okay, I found a brush for my brows. I have a couple of them here. And I just use this one. I'll make a new layer. Brought my flow up to 100% and I click on my brow. Now this brow is of course the wrong location and way too big. So I'm turning this into a smart object. Which makes things easier. And then I press in German it is STRG, I think in English it's Ctrl <laughs> Yes, Ctrl and T for transform. You can go to edit and free transform. It's the same. Then I am holding down Shift and Alt and scale it down. And then I'm rotating it. There. Make it a bit smaller still. Move it a bit. Let me see how the other one. So uh, this is why I stamp on a new layer, so I can disable the stamp and see the location of the brow, which will make things easier to make them look like they belong there. This is nice. Disable. Let me zoom out. There we go. Let me. I'm going to move this a bit here. And this was my Windows menu. I did not appreciate that. And to be able to change the color and everything, I have to convert that back to rasterize layer here. Turning this a bit, just a bit darker to fit to the rest. And see if the opacity there. And this is much better and much easier for me to make an eyebrow white. That is why I do that. And this is how we change the hair to white. Again, you can completely stamp this over here and um, not bother with that at all or you can go and try to get every little hair here white and make it look natural um, when you have a face looking forward with a face co um, uh, not covered, framed with hair you usually don't have this problem so um, it really depends on what kind of picture you use to change your colors here um, now, as I said, you can do the same with your skin color. Let me pull this into the white here. And use this young lady here to show. Um, the, what I usually do is I just take the skin color I want here, for example, the blue for Andorian, and then use the nice round soft brush and paint all over this here and here and here I can fix this oil ring later and over the arm and use color that's the easiest way to do it um, you can also use the color balance as we had earlier and make something more blue, shadows more blue. As you can see, since the skin is so bright, it is a bit difficult, uh, more difficult, but you can get there if you play around a little bit. As you know, Andorians, for example, don't have red blood, so don't use magenta in it for red cheeks. They don't really do that. And you can do this, and you can play around with the overlay here, 
but then you have to make sure that you change the lips and everything. You can also take the desaturation and simply colorize. Use a nice blue raise the saturation here. For example, like this, make it a bit darker and then activate the white. <laughs> of course you have then to change this here, but we can simply pull the stemmed eyebrow cover down, 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 come on, under the hue saturation and that works too. Then you can just adjust the rest here that you need to and make sure that it fits together and blends nicely, not like here. As I said, I didn't really work in all the detail just to show you how to do it. You can say like this. What I also like to use for is, for example, for orients. And that depends on how dark or light your Dorian. Uh, Orion is, not your Dorian, I'm sorry. Um, I'll do this. The hair usually isn't green, so we simply mask that out here. So we can either you do this masking here. Give me a moment at least pretend that I do detail work here. <laughs> and what we can do is for example add the black here. We just have to make sure that... Oh yes, that looks strange because of the eyebrow cover. There we go. And then we see, for example, uh, Orion with black hair with a light blue tint. And again, you need stuff to make sure that this works out here. Fix the little details around the edges. That's all this little work that you have to work on once you have what you got or while you're working on it. It really depends on how you work for yourself. I usually make the rough stuff and then go in for the detail work. I'm probably making it myself very hard with that, but it isn't fun if it isn't work, isn't it? <laughs> so this is how you change the colors of your hair or your skin and I actually like this dark color on here um, and you can use this for everything you can use it for hair as you see you can use it for eyes and for your skins for clothes for accessories or your backgrounds and um, with that you can play around have a lot of fun make sure that you really get the picture you want so now if you have a character you want to make a picture for and you see this really gorgeous person and they have blonde hair but you want black hair now you know how to do it um, you don't have to search for someone else if you don't want to and I hope that this helped some of you and I'm looking forward to the next tutorial I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to show but I'm pretty sure it will be fun so until next time and stay creative.